those we care for. This video includes client conditions, stages of growth and development, basic human needs, Maslow's pyramid, the acute chronic and terminal illness, psychiatric patients, intensive care patients, physiologic needs, rehabilitation, culture and religion, the holistic approach, human sexuality and intimacy, quality of life, and attending to families. There's much more than being a nursing assistant than blood pressures and bed pants. A healthcare worker can go to the most well-known schools, receive the most intense training, and graduate at the top of his class. But if he or she is not able to connect on a human level with his patients or residents, he or she will fail. Patients, residents, and clients. A patient is a person receiving health care in a hospital, clinic, or extended care facility. A resident is a person living in a long-term care facility or an assisted living facility. A client is a person who is receiving care in his own home from a health care agency. Client conditions. Those we care for. There are three general types of illnesses or conditions that cause a person to need health care services. For example, an acute illness is would be pneumonia. There are chronic illnesses and terminal illnesses, and that means that the patient will eventually die. An acute illness is a condition characterized by a rapid onset and a relatively short recovery time. Because the onset is rapid, acute illnesses are usually unexpected. Examples of acute illnesses, pneumonia, appendicitis, and a fracture. A chronic illness is a condition that is ongoing, for example, diabetes, asthma, arthritis, and hypertension. Terminal illness. A terminal illness is an illness or condition from which recovery is not expected. Examples, some types of cancers, end-stage emphysema, and some types of heart conditions, those we care for. Groupings of those we care for, sometimes they're grouped according to age, grouped according to type of illness and medical condition, and grouped according to special needs. Terms that are often used to describe people, surgical patients, medical, obstetrical, pediatric, geriatric, psychiatric, rehabilitation patients, subacute or extended care patients, and intensive care patients. Surgical patients, they have illnesses that are treated by surgery, for example, appendicitis and certain types of tumors. Medical patients have illnesses that are treated with interventions other than surgery, such as medication, physical therapy, or radiation. Example of medical patients, pneumonia, myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack, stroke, and some stomach disorders such as ulcers. Obstetrical patients are pregnant or just have given birth. Obstetric care extends throughout the pregnancy and labor and the delivery and then continues for about eight weeks after delivery. Pediatric patients, their children and adolescents, sometimes special considerations must be taken into account when providing treatment and care for the younger patients because a child's body does not function in exactly the same way as an adult. The sandwich generation is considered the middle adult. Geriatric patients are elderly adults. Healthcare workers who specialize in geriatrics are trained to recognize physical and mental effects of the normal aging process in order to help older adults adjust to these changes. Psychiatric patients. There are people with impaired mental health. They're often treated on an outpatient basis using a combination of counseling and medication. If deemed a danger to themselves or others, they may be admitted to a healthcare facility for treatment. Rehabilitation patients are those who are undergoing therapy 
to restore their highest level of physical, emotional, or mental, or vocational functioning. Examples are people born with disabilities or deformities, people who have had a stroke or are recovering from a surgery or an injury, people with substance abuse problems are all rehabilitation patients. Subacute or extended care patients. They're usually recovering from an acute illness or condition. They don't need total care provided by a hospital, but are not quite ready to return home. Examples are intravenously administered medications and physical therapy. Intensive care patients. Patients needing very specialized or intensive care are usually admitted to an intensive care unit or a special care unit. Examples are following a heart or brain surgery or after suffering from a heart attack or stroke. Question. The nursing assistant recognizes that there are general types of illnesses or conditions that can cause a person to seek health care services. Which of the following is the most common cause? Acute illness, chronic, terminal, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. Individuals seek the assistance of health care services for acute illness, chronic illness, and terminal illness. Some individuals may even seek care for all three over the course of their lives. Growth and development. Growth and development. These are changes that occur physically are known as growth. Growth is demonstrated by changes in height and weight and by physical maturation of the body's organ systems. Changes that occur psychologically or socially are known as development. Development is evidenced by changes in a person's behavior and the way of thinking. Principles of growth and development. They occur continuously throughout the person's lifespan from conception until death. They occur step by step in an orderly progression. Each stage has specific characteristics and tasks that must be accomplished before the person can progress to the next stage. Tasks of growth and development progresses from simple to complex, from the head to the toe, and from the center of the body outward. They occur at variable rates for each individual, and they may occur unevenly or in spurts. Stages of growth and development. Stages of growth and development. Infancy, birth to one year. Toddlerhood, one to three years. Preschool, three to five. School age, five to 12. Adolescence, 12 to 20. Young adult, 20 to 40. Middle adulthood is ages 40 to 65 years of age. They are considered the sandwich generation. Later adulthood is 65 to 75 years and older adulthood is 75 years old and beyond. Stages of growth and development. Infancy, birth to a year. Physical, psychological, both occur rapidly. New tasks are being accomplished on a weekly and monthly basis. The infant begins to smile and laugh, recognize parents, siblings, play peekaboo, and say simple words. He progresses from drinking only mother's milk or formula to feeding himself solid foods. Stage of the de development, toddlerhood, one to three years. Physical growth slows down during toddlerhood. Development of muscular and nervous systems allow the toddler to become quite active and permits greater control of the bladder and bowels. Toilet training begins. The toddler learns words to express emotions such as sad or scared. Remember that medical procedures that require separation of the child and the caregiver can be very frightening for the toddler. Stages of the growth and development. Preschool, three to five years. The preschooler's physical coordination improves a great deal. She learns to dress herself and tie her own shoes. Toileting becomes more independent. 
Children become aware of gender differences. They begin to develop a conscience and are able to follow the rules more easily. Stages of growth and development. School age, five to 12 years of age. Major physical growth spurts lead to an increase in both height and weight. At ages five to 12 years old, there is a improvement in writing and drawing ability. They actively seek approval from authority figures and parents. Morals develop. School-age children may feel very strongly about issues being either right or wrong. There's no gray area. Spirituality and religious beliefs, as well as concern for other living things, also take root during this developmental stage. Stages of growth and development. Adolescence, 12 to 20. Adolescence begins at the onset of puberty. Physical growth and development during adolescence is considerable. Psychologically, the period of adolescence is stormy. Adolescents may be self-conscious about their changes in their bodies. There's an increased awareness of their own sexuality. They begin to question the moral teachings of authority figures and parents. Stages of growth and development. Young adulthood, 20 to 40 years of age. There are significant changes when a young adult finds a marriage partner. Young adults typically enjoy stable, supporting friendships and good health. The physical changes that occur in young adults are generally minor. The adult height is achieved during adolescence. Stages of growth and development. Middle adulthood, 40 to 65 years of age. Middle adulthood frequently finds people at this time and the height of their careers and productivity. Adults find themselves in the role of caretaker to their children as well as their aging parents. Physically, the middle adult begins to show signs of aging such as wrinkles or a few gray hairs. Women typically experience menopause. While good health is usually still enjoyed, some chronic illnesses such as hypertension and diabetes become apparent during this stage. Stages of growth and development. Later adulthood, 65 to 75 years of age. The physical signs of aging and development of chronic illnesses become more prevalent. Strength diminishes as do many senses such as hearing and sight. During this stage, many people must cope with the loss of friends or the death of a spouse. Older adults, 75 years and beyond. The primary task in this stage is preparing for one's own death. Many must adjust to failing health and a growing dependency on others. They enjoy sharing wisdom in their years with the younger people. Question two. It is more important for all humans to grow and develop through life in the same way at the same time. True or false? False. All people progress through the stages of growth and development in a series of expected steps. However, they do not progress through these stages at the same rate. Each person progresses through the stages at his or own own pace. Basic human needs. Basic human needs. Clearly, all patients and residents are not alike. The people you will care for will be in different growth and development stages and as such, they will have different needs. The primary mission of healthcare is to administer the physical and emotional needs of those we care for. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. A need can be defined as something that is essential for a person's physical and mental health. Abraham Maslow, 1908 to 1970, a famous American psychologist, defined what he thought to be the basic human needs. Maslow's pyramid, called Maslow's Hierarchy of Human Needs, reflects Maslow's belief of the more basic, lower-level needs that must be met first at some degree before the higher levels can be met. Maslow's pyramid. Beginning at the bottom, physiological needs, such as physically we need water, we need oxygen, and we need nutrition. Nutrition is a basic physiological need. 
The next level is safety and security needs. A basic human need is to feel safe. Graduates up to the next level, love and belonging, self-esteem, self-actualization. The nursing assistant's role. Physiological needs. As we said earlier, the basic needs. Oxygen, water, shelter, elimination, rest and sleep, physical activity, and sexuality. Meeting the physiological need is essential for survival and it's of its highest priority. A person must have enough oxygen or he or she will die within minutes. The nursing assistant performs many duties that assist patients in meeting their physiological needs. For instance, assisting with meals, toileting, ambulation, and providing a relaxing environment in which to sleep. Safety and security needs. Safety and security needs are both physical and emotional. They are a basic human need. Nursing assistants follow policies and procedures that are designed to ensure their own safety as well as that of their patients or residents. To prevent the, the spread of infection, a nursing assistant follows the procedure for hand washing. In order to protect a resident who is at risk for falling, the nursing assistant always makes sure the resident has his walker close at hand. Love and belonging needs. All people need to feel loved, accepted, and appreciated by others. People meet this need for one or another by showing affection and forming close, intimate relationships. By taking an interest in a person and showing respect for the person's specific likes and dislikes, nursing assistants can help to meet that person's need to feel loved, accepted, and appreciated by others. A kind smile from the nursing assistant, a kind word, and a gentle touch. Self-esteem needs. Self-esteem is influenced by how a person perceives himself and how she thinks others perceive her. Everyone wants to be respected and thought well of by others. Many things can affect the self-esteem of a person who is receiving health care, such as having to wear a hospital gown, having surgery that might cause a person's physical appearance to change, and having to depend on others for something he or she used to be able to do himself. Self-esteem needs. A nursing assistants help their patients to preserve their patients and residents' self-esteem by providing for privacy when it's necessary to expose someone's body, allowing for people to wear their own clothes, and assisting the patients with basic grooming needs. Self-actualization needs. The highest level on the hierarchy of needs is self-actualization. In order to achieve self-actualization, a person must reach his or her fullest potential. Examples of goals that patients or residents may have include taking one step for a person who has had a stroke, delivering a healthy baby for a pregnant woman, and returning home for a person that has broken a hip. Basic human needs. By helping people to meet their most essential needs first, you will enable them to meet their higher level of needs first. For example, if it's difficult to work on a person's self-esteem if he's struggling to breathe, recognizing needs that people have difficulty meeting on their own and helping them to meet these needs is one of the most valuable contributions you will make as a nursing assistant. Question three. Put the following in correct order, starting with the base of Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. That's from the bottom up. Number one, self-esteem needs. Number two, physiologic needs. Number three, love and belonging needs. And number four, safety and security needs. Answer to question three. B. Two, four, three, and one. The correct order moving from the base toward the top. Physiologic needs, safety and security needs, love and belonging needs, self-esteem needs. Human sexuality and intimacy. Human sexuality and intimacy. All human beings are sexual beings. 
Heterosexuals are attracted to members of the opposite sex. Homosexuals are attracted to members of the same sex. Bisexuals are attracted to members of both sexes. Transsexuals believe that they should be members of the opposite sex. Transvestite is a person that becomes sexually excited by dressing as a member of the opposite sex. Nursing assistants and sexuality. There are many ways that a nursing assistant, you can help patients and residents fulfill their need to be sexual beings. Avoid being judgmental. Help your patients and residents with rituals that make them feel either feminine or masculine. Allow for privacy. Always knock at the door before entering a person's room. Culture and religion. Culture and religion. Culture is another thing that makes human beings human. Culture is made up of beliefs, including religious or spiritual beliefs, values and traditions that are customary to a group of people. While racial identity is often mixed with a person's culture, race is a general characteristic that describes skin color, body stature, facial features, and hair texture. A person's spiritual beliefs or religion are often very closely linked with his culture. Culture and religion. Throughout your career, you may be lucky enough to care for people from many different cultural and religious backgrounds. You will most likely encounter situations, practices, and beliefs that no book could have prepared you for. Take time to listen to your patients or residents and learn from them. Exposure to cultures other than your own is enriching, both professionally and personally. Respecting the individual. As a healthcare professional, you are trained to care for a person's physical needs. A holistic approach to healthcare takes into consideration a person's emotional, spiritual, and social needs, as well as his or her physical ones. Making an effort to accommodate a person's cultural beliefs and practices and allowing patients and residents to make decisions related to their own quality of life is one way that a healthcare worker provides humanistic care. Being a patient or a resident. What is it like to be a patient? Patients feel scared and lonely. They feel sick. They're unsure about their health now and in the future. What is it like to be a resident? They must adjust to the loss of independence. They must adjust to new home and the possibility of a roommate. The nursing assistant and the individual. When you must care for a patient or resident who makes you wish you had never chosen to be a nursing assistant, and you can be certain that you'll encounter patients or residents like this, stop and think for a moment about the reasons that the person may be acting out of sorts. When you look beyond the illness or condition, past the technical difficulties and procedures and into the person's eyes, you will find a reason for choosing to be a nursing assistant, a person who needs you very much. Quality of life. Quality of life is getting satisfaction and comfort from the way we live. Everyone has a different idea. Everyone will decide what they do and do not want. The holistic approach meets the patient's emotional, spiritual, and physical needs when providing care. You must respect his or her wishes. Provide information to help the client or resident to make a decision. Attending to families. Attending to families. Families can be diverse and may include friends as well. A significant other may be the same sex partner, which would be considered homosexual. Each family is different. Some are close and loving, some are distant and abusive. Attending to families. Care must be taken to address the stress and sense of helplessness a family or friend may experience when a loved one is hospitalized or admitted to a care facility. The situation affects the entire family. Question four. It is often beneficial to include the family when making healthcare decisions if the patient or resident consents. True or false? Answer is true. If the patient or resident 
consents that it's very important for our family members to be included in their decisions. In reality, you do not just provide care for the family or the resident, you must also consider the needs of the person's family. The end.